Welcome to the very last lesson on HTML. And in this lesson, we're going to do a project called Open Books. So I've created a new folder here. Notice that we've written all of our code so far in the web folder, but this time around I've created an Open Books folder. And inside the Open Books folder, I have an index.html file that I created using brackets. A word of caution here, when you create a new file in brackets, make sure to go to file and open folder and open the folder that the new index.html file is in. Otherwise you will get problems with live preview. I had to debug it for a while and was definitely a pain until I figured it out. Now live preview should work properly as soon as we add some content to our index.html. So let's start doing that. Let's create an HTML file and then a head tag with a title and let's call it open books, read organized free classic books. And hopefully from the title, you might be able to figure out what this project will be about. If not, I'll explain it in just a second. And in the body, let's just create an H1 called open books, select a book to start reading. This is going to be a project this is going to be a project about making well-indexed, organized books that have been out of copyright. A classic one that we're going to start with is Sun Tzu's Art of War. So let's look up Art of War free PDF. And the first result that comes up is The Art of War by Sun Tzu's on SunTzuSaid.com. This looks like a good one. So let's go ahead and download it. We are largely going to be working with Sun Tzu's Art of War. But if you're interested in more books, I'm going to write down some recommendations of great books that are out of copyright, like The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Another great book that's out of copyright is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And you can add any other book that's been published for over 70 years. So let's start creating a mockup for what our index.html page can look like. So we'll probably want some pictures here indicating the book, maybe with titles. So for the pictures, I will have three books available, but only one of them, The Art of War, is going to be a complete page. For additional practice, I recommend you fill up the other two pages with the picture of Dorian Gray and Heart of Darkness or any other books that you find that are out of copyright. So for our images, we would probably want them tiled horizontally. So since they would be images for books, they would probably have greater vertical height than horizontal width. So we could probably fit three of them on one page and have it still look nice. And in order to fit three images onto a page in HTML, we actually have to start with the table tag. And inside the table tag, We'll just create one row and then each TD will actually be an image of the cover of our book. So for the images, I'm at images.google.com and I just typed in the art of war Sun Tzu. And then under tools, I'm going to go down to usage rights and labeled for reuse. Labeled for reuse will give you an image that you can reuse. So let's pick this third one. I'm going to go to view image and just copy this URL and then place it inside the image tag, source being the URL and alt text being Sun Tzu, Art of War. And for our other two columns, let's find an image for the picture of Dorian Gray. This is a good one. If any of you have read the book, this is a very fitting image. We'll copy this link again inside of our image tag. We'll give this to be the source and call this the picture of Dorian Gray. And then finally, let's look for a picture for Heart of Darkness. This one looks good. It even has Joseph Conrad, Heart of Darkness. Copy the URL, create an image tag, alt text being Heart of Darkness. And just for better readability, Underneath the image, let's just specify that it'll lead to Heart of Darkness. 
That's a very ominous place that the image will lead to. It'll lead to the heart of darkness. Very ominous sounding, but the book is like that too. So it's labeled Picture of Dorian Gray. And then let's also label Art of War. Do note that eventually we will wrap this image tag and text underneath it inside of an A tag to signify a link, and then we'll link it to a separate HTML page. Before we can do that, we need to create the HTML files that the links will link to. So let's create a new file and save it as heartofdarkness.html. And similar to before, let's give it our standard HTML tags, a head with a title, an HTML tag, a body, and inside the title, let's call it Heart of Darkness. Now let's create a new file and call it Dorian Gray HTML. And similar to before, HTML, head, title, Dorian Gray. Go down underneath the head, create a body tag. Now let's just create a third HTML file for art of war .html. HTML, head, title, art of war, go underneath the head, body, and now we have our three HTML pages. But we're really only going to be working with art of war and the index.html page. Let's go down here. Ooh, the table is rendering, but the images are too big. So let's scale them down a little bit. Let's give each of our images height equals 300. How does that look? Not bad. Although it does seem like there's some spacing after the picture of Dorian Gray, which is making this look a little bit bloated. The middle tag seems to be taking up the most space. So let's create a break underneath here, and that should fix that issue. So before the text of each image, let's add a break. And that looks much better now. Let's see what happens when we shorten this. Hmm, it does overflow on, on a smaller resolution. So let's give it a height of 250. Let's just try that out. A little bit better, but I think 200 might be just a tad bit better. There we go. So the picture of Dorian Gray, Heart of Darkness. And notice it's actually the picture of Dorian Gray the text that's making this middle cell the largest because remember that tables columns automatically adjust their width to the width of the longest cell so it's this text that's making the picture much wider but that's okay if we were better at css we could probably fix that but we'll get there so now we need to make each of these images a link that will link to its own separate page so let's do that let's first indent each of these images, add some spacing underneath and before, some indentation here. After this TD, let's create an A tag, a href, and this time we're linking to a local file called artofwar.html, and this is why we wanted to create that file in advance so that brackets can suggest autocompletes for us. And then I just cut off the ending tag and placed it after the art of war text. So let's do the same thing with the picture of Dorian Gray. Let's create an A tag with a reference to doriangray.html and then take off the end of the A tag and add it in towards the bottom. And finally, let's do that with Heart of Darkness. href to heartofdarkness.html and then underneath the Heart of Darkness, we close the A tag. So there we go. Now. Clicking on the Art of War will take us to Art of War. Note that we did specify a title, but that was all we did. Then we go back, refresh. Dorian Gray takes us to Dorian Gray. We go back. Now we can go to Heart of Darkness, which takes us to Heart of Darkness. So now we've linked local HTML files to our main index.html file. Good user experience would indicate that we should also add a back to home button up here to the top so that users don't have to click on the back button in the browser. Good user experience and user interface design tells us that there should be some way to go back within the page. So that's one element that we'll need to add to Art of War. The other thing we'll need to add here is a table of contents. 
Note that the PDF that we downloaded does not have a table of contents. So this means if you just wanted to skip to the chapter on spies, for example, great chapter, by the way, if you wanted to skip directly to the, the spies chapter, you'd have to scroll all the way down, which is actually a pretty bad user experience. So we will want to create a table of contents that can link directly to the chapter and take the visitor directly to the chapter that they're interested in. So those are the two things we want to add to our main page. And naturally, the rest of the page will just be the text of the book itself. So table of contents up here, a back button to the left, and then the rest of the text from the book. So far, for our Open Books project, we've created our index page, index.html, which is our home page. After creating our index.html page, we also added covers for our free open books, Art of War, Picture of Dorian Gray, and Heart of Darkness. We use this by creating a table with one row where each cell in the table is both an image and also a link with text. And each of these links lead to a separate page also in our current folder, one for Art of War, you can see that because of the title change up here, another for the picture of Dorian Gray, again the title change, and a third for Heart of Darkness. Now we're going to focus on one HTML file for the book and the rest of the HTML files you can use for practice on expanding this website and also on improving your own HTML skills. So let's go to Art of War and open up that file in our text editor. For the rest of this lesson, I'm not going to use live preview. I'm actually going to manually reload the page and on the right will be a reference to the actual PDF of the book just because at this point, you should be comfortable enough looking at HTML code and writing HTML code. And if you're not quite there yet, don't worry about it. Just follow along and I'll walk you through why we're doing what we're doing. So let's open up artofwar.html. And you can see in the page here to the right, all it is right now is Art of War, the title. Now in the body, let's open up our book Art of War as reference. So I've opened up artofwar.pdf. And this book is unique because not only does each chapter have a title, the text within each chapter is also listed as bullet points in order. So unlike a regular novel, where we might be using paragraph tags for each of these paragraphs, we're actually going to be using lists and list items. Second of all, whether a chapter has a title or not is important because that will affect the way we design our navigation for the table of contents. If chapters don't have a title, you can create the navigation as a list item. But since chapters do have titles in this book, we'll probably want to think of a slightly better structure that has chapter numbers on the left and then maybe uh, the name of the chapter on the right with even spacing and, and things like that. So before we design the navigation, let's just create a simple back button that will take the user back inside of our body. And let's add that in the header tag. So in the header, I'm going to create an A, href equals dot slash index.html. And then this link, I'm just going to call back to books. So let's go back to Chrome, reload, and we see a back to books. And if we were using CSS, we might add a little bit of an arrow symbol up here We'll get to that in the next part of the course on how to add icons to make buttons and links especially helpful and stand out. So now let's go down to our main content and let's create a main tag. And inside of our main tag, let's start by creating a table of contents. We'll create an H3, call it table of contents. And underneath our table of contents, since it does say table, and since we do have both a chapter number and a chapter name, we will need to use a table. If there was only a chapter number, you could get away with using a list for your links and things like that. But since it is both a chapter number and a chapter name, using a table will give us better organization on how to design this content. So let's start by creating a table. And inside the table, let's add a T head with a TR. And remember, since we have a T head and a T row inside it, we're not going to use a TD to create each cell, we're actually going to use a th tag to let the browser know that this is a header cell. And for our first header cell, we're going to say chapter number, and then we'll create another header cell and call it chapter name. When we save and reload, we see chapter number and chapter name. 
If you want to add some nice spacing between these, I'm going to show you a quick little hack that you normally shouldn't use, but since we're only working with HTML, this will make the table of contents look a little bit nicer. And all I did is add the width equals 100% pro property. And when I save and refresh the page, it will show chapter number and chapter name spaced out fairly nicely. So now let's continue. Let's go outside the T head and continue adding T rows. One row will have one TD and let's call it chapter one. And then another TD with the name of the chapter. We're not gonna add the chapter names just yet, but I do want to point out that we should be copying the TR and the TD, this template right here, for however many chapters there are in our book. So there's chapter one all the way down to chapter 13. So there are 13 chapters. And before we copy and, and start pasting this, so what I've done is I've enclosed the A tag as inside each table cell instead of having the row be completely enclosed by the A tag. And that that error came up because when you're designing a table, there are very strict rules of the row being a direct child of the table element. So the row has to be a direct child of the table element, and then each cell must be a direct child of the row. Even wrapping this A tag around the TD wouldn't work. So be careful about that when designing tables because there are strict rules. And then inside each cell, you can put anything you want. You can put images, you can put anything you want inside each cell. But in order for a table to function properly, you have to have this very precise. So now we have a row that's a direct child of the table. And then we have a TD that's a direct child of the row and an A tag inside of each TD. Now let's give this chapter a name, laying plans. And when we do, it appears here on the right. Now let's copy each row because the, each row has both the chapter number and also the chapter name. And then we'll add the IDs for each row after we've designed the rest of the book. Let's call this row chapter two, and then just give a generic chapter name here. Edit the chapter name later. Now I'll copy the most recent row that I just pasted. And after refreshing, you can see that chapter two comes up here with a generic chapter name. Now we go on to the next row. Let's call it chapter three. And then underneath it, let's create a fourth row, call it chapter four. And while we're here, we may as well start naming the chapters. So chapter two is called Waging War. Waging War. Chapter three is called Attack by Stratagem. So Attack by Stratagem. And then chapter four is called Tactical Dispositions. Now let's continue just pasting. This is chapter five and that's called Energy. Energy. Now underneath the next row, paste chapter six and that chapter is called Weak Points and Strong. Weak Points and Strong. Next we have chapter seven, which is Maneuvering. Maneuvering. Chapter seven. And the next row is chapter eight, and that is called Variation in Tactics. Chapter nine is called the Army on the March. The Army on the March. Chapter 10 is called Terrain. Terrain. Chapter 10. Next row, we have chapter 11. And this chapter is called The Nine Situations. That is very specific. There are exactly nine situations nine situations. This is a great classic book, by the way. Most of the things in here are timeless and to a large extent still true. Chapter 12, the attack by fire, the attack by fire. And finally, we have chapter 13, which is the use of spies. 
the use of spies. This is the most renowned chapter in the book and has shaped the espionage strategy of various nations. So now let's save and go back to our HTML page to make sure everything looks properly. We have chapter one, laying plans, chapter two, waging war, chapter three, attack by stratagem. Now, when we make our web page smaller, the table automatically changes in size and doesn't really break or or overflow to the next line or anything like that. So this will actually look nice on mobile devices too. And that's because of the width equals 100 property that we added to the top of the table. In the Bootstrap 4 module, we'll get into how to do this properly with Bootstrap as well. There is one other really important thing that we should add to this table. And it's a special property called role. And that role we're going to specify as navigation. This is really important for assistive technology devices because table is a non-standard way to define navigation. We used a table in this case because we wanted to separate out our chapter number and chapter name in a nice way with even formatting, but to an assistive technology, this will be read as a table, not a, a navigation. And this is what it really is. I mean, we, we do have this table of contents specified up in the H3, so that will be read out. But again, navigation is a more appropriate role for this. And there are various roles similar to navigation that brackets will give you examples of. There's all kinds of roles you can specify for assistive technology devices in order to make using your web application or website more accessible. So for this, we're going to specify the role navigation and let assistive technologies know that this is a way to navigate through the rest of the page in an effective way. Okay, now let's go down to the end of our table here. And here is where I'm going to define an HTML tag to start and indicate the rest of the book. So I'm going to call this an article. It's a really long article, but the purpose of the article tag is to create a self-contained piece of content. And if you're looking for the book, the self-contained piece of content is the entire book itself. First of all, we should probably specify that this will be the Art of War translated by Lionel Giles, originally published in 1910. So before we get to the content of the book, let's specify an H3. Actually, let's do an H2 this time. It holds a slightly higher priority than an H3, and since it is a main title, we'll probably want to say the Art of War by Sun Tzu, and then create an H3 underneath it, translated by Lionel Giles, another H3, originally published in 1910. Okay, now let's create some break tags and then begin our first chapter. And this chapter, we're going to put inside a section tag because it is its own section. And let's give this an ID of CH1. Now that we've given it an ID, let's copy this ID and go back up to our chapter one in the table of contents. And in our link for chapter one, we're going to select both and then add CH1. This will add a link to both chapter one and also laying plans that will take our users to the first chapter. And just to let them know that they're definitely on the first chapter, let's create an H4 here, call it chapter one, laying plans. And underneath it, now we can start getting into the body of the book. And the body of the book will actually be an ordered list with a list item representing each point. So first list item, Sun Tzu said, Second list item, it is a matter of life and death. Third list item. Now at this point, I recommend you pause the video and copy the list items on your own before moving to the next part of the video. Because in the next part of the video, I will have already copied over all of these list items. And one thing to point out is that this five comma six, this is probably a mistranslation. I'm just going to follow the list item format here. And the other thing to point out is, is definitely use 
some nice indentation when separating out these list items. I didn't do it for the first few, but definitely do it for each list item. Here I'm going to cut the video and we'll come back with chapter two.